morning everyone welcome from imagination online experience this is aga and today we will discuss an artist who was born in spain in catalonia jean miro was born in Barcelona, incredible city that is located in uh, between the mountains and the sea. Very inspiring with wonderful architecture by Antonio Gaudi. Jean Miro was very proud. He was from Catalonia and his art was very much inspired by his identity. Today we are going to do some colorful projects. One will involve splash art in watercolor and the second project will be a three-dimensional sculpture with elements from Jean Miro paintings. <laughs> Miro start, started painting at an early age of seven he started taking art classes and he was probably more or less your age. His parents were goldsmiths and watchmakers. So art and beautiful things were always very important in Miro's house. He later started studying art and business. Then he got sick and after the illness he decided he doesn't want to be involved in business anymore because art is his real path and real passion. Miro lived many years in France, in Paris, and he met many artists that we discussed here. He was inspired by Fauvism and Henri Matisse. He was influenced by Cubism and Pablo Picasso whom he met and got friends with. Later, he also took inspiration from the Surrealist movement. But he refused to be named as a part of any of these art movements. He wanted to create his own unique art and not belonging to any group. Jean Miro was inspired by Catalan folk art, by children's drawings and very often he would start his painting without any planning, without any idea. He would just do it spontaneously. He 
you would also include some elements from his subconscious mind. The colors he used were very often primary colors. Do you remember which are the three primary colors? It's blue, yellow, and red. These three colors very often appear in his art together with lots of black lines. His art is very much childlike with lots of symbols too. In this picture we can see the eye appearing the eye of the universe that's looking over everything <laughs> I really love this image and today's artwork will be based on this very colorful and almost surreal picture by Jean Miro. Mm. He also was famous for making sculptures. Later in his life, in 1940s and 50s, he started making lots of sculptures, like these ones. The Miro Museum in Barcelona was opened when he was still alive. Jean Miro was born in 1893 and died in 1983. The museum holds a wonderful collection of art, not just sculptures, but paintings, ceramics, and many forms of art that Miro specialized in. There is also a giant tapestry, a wonderful, huge art form that shows all the colors and all the shapes that Jean Miro was famous for. Let's have a look together at some examples of his work from the Miro Foundation Museum in Barcelona.
this picture painted by Jean Miro between 1970 and 1975 is called the singing fish. Can you see the fish? Right! It's one of the most recognizable works by Miro. There's a lot of abstract shapes here, but the main point of focus is the head of the fish. You can see influenced by other artists here, the splashes look like Jackson Pollock's art. And the colors are Miro's favorite colors. There's a lot of primary red, yellow and blue with an addition of green and black. Very simple forms and it's almost like a picture painted by a child. Miro uses his usual symbols, the stars, the circles, and lots of lines. I would like today to paint a singing fish with watercolors. So let's prepare our space for watercolor painting. I'm going to put this picture here in the corner so you can all see it. And the first thing we're going to do is sketch. Let's do a gentle sketch. Got my pencil a black outliner which is a permanent marker. It's very important that is waterproof. So Sharpie works here really well and some paint brushes. So I'm just gonna sketch some lines of the singing fish. You can see that the fish is somewhere in the middle of the piece of paper. And it's made of lines. It's really good to start with a pencil sketch.
So when you're using watercolors, remember to add a lot of water into your color. So I'm going to do that first. Okay, now is the fun part. I'm going to show you how to do the splashing. So first I'm going to show you on a separate piece of paper what's the best way to do splashing. So you need quite a lot of water in your paint pot and then the watery paint on your brush you just hit your hand and allow the color to splash you can just do that by tap, tapping your finger into into your brush so practice on a separate piece of paper splashing like that or like that and then we're gonna do the splashing all over the fish
So I'm using the tapping technique here. And I will use a bit of watery paint. close to the paper to make the splashes bigger and you see I'm just doing tap 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 be careful with the surroundings because it may get splashed as well Mural paintings are full of symbols. We are going to start our project by taking a box, empty cereal box. And we're gonna use it for the project. Now I'm going to prepare my pieces of cardboard and round edges. Now I'm going to use a black sharpie to draw
on my pieces of cardboard. Miro used a lot of primary colors 
which is red, yellow and blue. So I'll do the same. I'm using watercolors. You can use paints or markers, whatever is better for you.
I will leave the rest with the back, white background. I just need to wait for these to dry and then I'm ready to paint the other side. Okay, all we need to do now when our pictures are dry <coughs> is to paint the other sides. I'm going to use acrylic paints in three primary colors. <clears throat> because acrylic paints are permanent, difficult to wash off, make sure that you, you put your artwork on a piece of newspaper or card. Then I'll put them on the side to dry. When you're using acrylic paint, there's no need to use any water. You just need to rinse your brush between using different colors. Like that. We'll leave it for at least 15 minutes to dry really well. And if you used acrylic paints like me, make sure you go and wash your hands now. Okay everyone, we have all our pieces that we will use for the 3D sculpture. First, we drew on one side and then I painted the other side. What we need to do now is construct it into a sculpture. How to do that? Well, two of my pieces have flat bottoms so they will be standing like so then I will connect them with one of these pieces I'll just make a small small cut like that so I can slide in the other parts the cardboard Right, and 
now I'm gonna connect these two parts to make my sculpture stand. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep adding all these other bits. to make the sculpture look even better. You can also use a little bit of glue to connect the pieces together. to be on top overlooking the whole universe to use some glue to connect my sculpture together. my three-dimensional Miro inspired sculpture finished. How did you do? I hope you enjoyed making your Miro inspired sculpture and that everything holds together really well like this. On my sculpture you can see 
elements from different paintings and they all connected and painted in primary colors <laughs> You can also make a sculpture in a very different way. You can use rocks or stones that you found in the park or on the beach. I love pebbly beaches because they have all those wonderful stones that Every single one is different and every single one has a different story. I wanted to show you some of Miro sculptures. Some made of bronze. which is a metal and some made of natural materials like stone and he also painted them these wonderful Stone sculptures inspired me and other children to make our own sculptures made of stone and polymer clay or just plasticine. So I used a beautiful stone I found when I was on holiday and then add the base from polymer clay or plasticine including some circles very typical for Miro's style these are some other works done by children a few more this one is lovely too and it includes some toothpicks you can even see the design drawing do any sculpture it's really great to do a drawing a design how your sculpture should look like I hope you're gonna try out different ways to create like Jean Miro and I hope you enjoyed today's lesson number 10 Next week will be our last lesson from this course. We learned about so many different artists. And now you can use all your new skills and new inspiration to create art in your own style. <laughs>